Now, folks, the market rally just keeps going on. Today, the Dow raced in 70-point loss and wound up 21 points higher. And as the Fed meeting continues, I have this question. Could more easing be on the way instead of less? We're going to look at that intriguing possibility next up on Cudlow. Hey, so here we are, our first lesson on financial analysis, right? I mean, if you remember what we've done is we've talked about this stuff. First, we talked about the economy, the circular flow, and then what the role of the financial system was in that, and then what role of capital markets, particularly the stock market, was in the financial system. Then we talked about basic types of investments that are traded there. We talked about the law of supply and demand, mostly so that we can understand how to read supply and demand in the market. And all of that is a backdrop, basically building us up to being able to read how accounting information or predict how it will probably affect the stock market. In other words, use in a real world context everything that you've learned about accounting so far. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is get to my website and you can follow along or you can just watch the video and do it later. But what you're going to look for is this note right here. So under in-class notes, grade 11 accounting, if you head down to the bottom, you have the financial analysis note. And what's going to open is this. Looks like there's a lot of stuff. We're going to do it bit by bit. The first thing we're really just going to talk about is the different types of analysis there are. There are two types of financial statistics. The one we're going to talk about today is a common size analysis. Right? And the reason we're doing all of this, I'm just going to quickly say, is because it's what people actually do with accounting numbers. This is, no, this is not a joke. If you walk in and ask for a mortgage, a bank will actually calculate your personal ratios. So, if we scroll down to financial statistics, you'll see that common size analysis, there are two types. The first one is for the income statement. You divide everything by total revenue. Right, right here. For the balance sheet, you divide all values on every balance sheet by total assets. Okay. So what we're going to do now is you're going to go to learning support, reference materials for this class, and you're going to grab this ratio file. And this is what you're going to get. And we're going to come back to that in one second. You also need in this file that you're viewing right now under Dig Deeper, the assignment file, which is going to be basically linked to this. The way you can find this on your own when you start to do your own activities is of course something like Yahoo Finance or Google Finance and you'd simply go and you would search for example um, if it's Apple which our examples are based on and you grab the quote for Apple along the left all you're gonna find well all you're gonna find a lot of stuff including down at the bottom at least on this site financials income statement balance sheet and so forth okay so what I've done is I've laid out everything we need to learn how to do this so to start with, the statistics, the common size stats that measure financial position are based, of course, on a balance sheet. And the whole purpose to this is understanding how to be, not really understanding, but being able to compare companies over time as they grow or shrink, or compare different com companies of completely different size and completely different industries. And you can't do that unless you can level the playing field. In other words, turn apples and oranges into just apples so that things are comparable. That's why, if you look here, the process of common size analysis for the balance sheet is to take every item on the balance sheet and divide it by the value of total assets so that everything, every company's values are relative to their own total assets. Same thing with the income statement that measures performance. You take every item, every single item, value on the income statement and you divide it by total revenue. So it doesn't matter how much your revenue is or how small, every company's values, every company's expenses, every company's rent, every company's salaries will be a percentage, a relative percentage of their revenue. And now suddenly companies of greatly different size are comparable. So let's go over here and let's look at Apple. right? It's a classified balance sheet, so it has current as well as long-term assets and liabilities, etc., etc. It's a corporation, so there's some stuff you won't recognize. Not an issue, at least not yet. So, how do we do this? Well, if we go back here, remember, every item on the balance sheet is divided by total assets. Every item on the income statement is divided by total revenue. So what we have to do is maybe if you want to leave a space, Go over here, we're going to go equals and click on the very first value of the balance sheet. 
and we're going to divide it by total assets for that year, which is this. Now, following your spreadsheet rules, as we copy down, we want to make sure that this is what we're dividing by every time. So we don't want the row of that to change, so we put a dollar sign in front of it. And we're essentially finished. All we need to do now is copy down and across. Now, if you leave it like that, you'll never be able to analyze anything. There's too many decimal places. So what you do up here is under normal, this is a Google Doc spreadsheet by the way, change it to two decimal places. Now you're looking at percentages as a decimal. If you don't like looking at them as a decimal, change it to a percentage, right? The decimal places need to line up or you won't make any visual sense of it. Now these are zero, so you don't need them. Delete them. Same here. Notice how total assets divided by itself is always 100%. Now, what your eyeballs cannot do, but they can't with numbers, they can do with percentages. They can see very quickly how much smaller this line is. So long-term investments have gone from 33% in the year 2010, right? Because these are the same years. If we put them over here, they've gone from 33% to 52%. Now, that's not the end of it. You can take that number and copy it down here too, right? Because this is accounts payable divided by total assets. Everything on the balance sheet is divided by total assets. And so we repeat the process everywhere we have values. And if something like this comes up because you're dividing by zero or you have a zero value, no problem, get rid of it. How do you do it for the income statement? Simple, go back to your ratios. Every item divided by total revenue, simple enough. That means for net income, it's gonna be this number divided by, well, itself, right? This number. Again, as we copy down, we don't want that denominator to change, so we put a dollar sign in front of it. Two decimal places, please, as a percentage, I guess. It's dividing by itself, so it's 100%. If I copy down, this is what happens. Then I'll copy across. I'll get rid of these blanks. It's that simple. So now the question is, what do you do with it, right? Now the goal, if you go back to your note, is to do this. How do you analyze them, right? After you've calculated all your stats, you need to compare them, and preferably compare them to industry averages, or look for red flags, which are things that stand out. Spot the red flags, spot the trends, and we'll talk about trend analysis later. What are red flags? Red flags are things like, uh, hmm, say, net income. Take a look. Net income was 21.5% of all revenue that Apple had in 2010. Three years later, it's gone up 20%, right? This is a 20% increase, 21 to 26. It's a bit more than 20%, right? That's an increase, and it's a steady increase. From 2010 to 2011, its profit as a share of all its revenue was higher. And from 2011 to 2012, again higher. That's a continuous trend of improving profitability. And that's not as easy to spot here. You can see the numbers get bigger, but you don't know how big they are relative to the increasing sales. Your eyeballs can't do that as well. Something they don't do as well either is what percentage is research and development, right? If you look at, oh, I'm on the wrong line. Research and development has actually fallen. For a tech company like Apple, that's not necessarily a good thing, right? It has fallen, it's gone up in total, but it has fallen as a percentage of revenue. That's important. That doesn't allow for continued increases in profitability if you run out of great new ideas. So common size analysis is critical at increasing the ease at which you can spot these types of trends because it takes away the absolute ridiculous magnitude of these numbers and converts everything to a common size.